I've come up to the northeast, a place called Darlington in the rain, sadly, to look at a car, a Japanese car from the 1970s. It's in this garage here, actually. Back in the 70s though, Japanese cars really were the most reliable, probably the most technologically advanced, but actually the least respected. It's taken all this time for Japanese cars of that era to really be cherished, but yet this one here hasn't been seen by anybody, including its owner, since about 1993 when it, when it went in there. And today we're gonna to pull it out and have a look at it. And it is a lesser known Japanese car. I can't wait to have a look. I'm Johnny Smith. This is of course a barn find edition of The Late Break Show. This episode is proudly supported by carandclassic.com, the biggest marketplace in Europe for classic cars, with over 35,000 vehicles on sale via online auction and classifieds. Kevin. Yes. This is your car, isn't it? Yes. It's your garage. Sure is, yeah. Now, for the purposes of this video, you've got to tell me, uh, when did you buy the car? In 1982. 1982, so it wasn't very old. No. I didn't realise you'd had it that long. No, yeah. Quite a long time. Okay, so hang on. So the car is a 1978. Yeah. You bought it in 82. Yeah. Gosh, you have had it. And, and you put it in there in? 93, I think. 30 years ago. Yeah. My word. So you really, you, you must be like the second owner. Yes, I think I am, yeah. Wow, okay. The car in question is? A Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi Colt Sapero, two, li two litre GSR. So that is that is the top of the range, as was. Yeah, then back then I think yeah. it was, yeah. yeah. So I can't wait to have a look at this. So it's a two door coupe, Mitsubishi Colt Sapporo, two litre, is it twin carb? I'm not so sure, I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> oh, so you haven't seen it in how long? Uh, pre, about 15, 15 years. Really? That was the last time I opened the garage door. Oh my gosh. Well. Let's, I'll ask him some more questions. I've got loads of questions for you and paperwork to look at. Yeah. But let's open the door and have a look at this thing. Right. I can't wait. Presumably you've got the key. Yeah. Yes. <sighs> got the fleece on. It's not waterproof, sadly. There we go. Is that it? <sighs> oh. Right, there it is. Look at that. 70s Japanese car that you probably haven't seen and probably haven't heard of because it always lives in the shadows, I think, of the Toyota Celica and the, the Datsun Z cars and um, even the Nissan Skyline of the 70s, I suppose. But the Mitsubishi Colt Sapporo. Wow. Well, it's dry. Yeah. So it was last on the road in 1993. Yeah. Why did it come off the road? Because it failed its test, basically, and there was a lot of uh, stuff wrong with it. And I don't think I was working at the time. Yeah. So it just, I just couldn't afford to deal with everything. Yeah. So it just got put in the garage because I was out of work. Yeah. My mother took over the payments of the garage. Okay. And she's done that ever since. Really? Ever since, yeah. And I've sort of like been in and out of work and different things. And every time I've got some money put aside yeah. to do it up, something else has cropped up. But you've and never sold it? I've never sold it. I couldn't sell it. It was a car I just sort of like fell in love with. Yeah. The first time I seen it, I thought, wow. Where did you Where did you see it? Where did I you seen see it, it? Uh, coming back from a match, football yeah. match from a Newcastle game. We were going through Chapel Town near Leeds, and I just saw this car and I thought, wow, I've got to sort of like find one of them. Yeah. And then a week later, there was one advertised, and I went and bought it. Brilliant. I've got to have a look in, inside, and um, I'll have a quick snoop and have a look at the condition because. The thing about Japanese cars of this era, as you well know, is that they like to rot almost immediately, let alone... So if you'd had it out there and lived with it for 30 years, yeah. it probably wouldn't exist in some ways. A so. very good chance it wouldn't have been. It's got some... We'll, we will get it out um, shortly. Pump the tyres up and stuff because they're flat. The car looks okay, actually. And I'm, I'm, I know it's very dusty and I won't disturb it too much, but I've got to say... The, oh my gosh, Kevin, the interior of this car is, look at that. Yeah, apart from the steering wheel. The steering wheel looks like it's, it's dis uh, disintegrated. disintegrated. But everything else, oh my gosh. If you like tartan, stay tuned. This is extremely tartan. <laughs> well, there's, there's the remains of a wasp's nest. Can you see that? This is a, you say this is a 78, 1978? Yeah. Well, from, my, from what I've researched, the Sapporo first went on sale in 78. 
So this is a very early car. Yeah. And GSR was top of the range, um, being two litre and being manual, it's the one to have. I can't wait to, uh, to pump the tyres up and roll it out into the sunlight for the first time in 30 years. Go so off. this car went in before the internet was invented. Sure it did. And before most people had mobile phones, Kev. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit weird, isn't yeah. it? Well, I've only just got one of the mobile phones myself. Have you? And that's only in the last flipping five, ten years. <laughs> We've had a little preliminary look round the Sapporo. Very cool. Um, we need to pump the tyres up because they're pretty much all flat. And then we'll pull it out and have a look at the engine and the rest of the condition. Uh, and the interior is exciting. It really is. Um, what's in the boot? There's a clutch. A clutch? Yeah, a brand new clutch ready to go in. Okay. Which was bought years and years ago and I never got around to doing it. So it needed a clutch when it went in? It was on the verge of going, yeah, so yeah. I bought one anyway because I was going to do it up. Yeah. Just, just never got around to it. Just one thing after another just kept going wrong and yeah. just got shelled. Something else come along and it just got shelved again. I'm going to have a look in the boot if that's all right. Yeah. No I've just noticed the original dealer um, sticker in the back window. Yeah. Oakley of Bishop Auckland. Yeah. That's nice. That's where I bought it from, yeah. Is it? Yeah. There's even some really cool oil cans. They're immaculate retro oil cans. <laughs> Look at this GTX one, it's absolutely mint. Brake pads. Brake. I, bought, I bought some new discs and I took them around my garage, but they're totally shot now. Oh, are they? They're ruined? Yeah. But you are right. There you go. There's a Saks clutch. Brand new, <laughs> in the box, ready to rock and roll. There's the other bit. Oh, yeah, look. Yeah. So you know it needs a clutch, but it doesn't matter because you've got one. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. So you haven't heard this thing run in 30 years? No. You haven't fired it up since 93? Not at all. Well, okay. Be interesting to see what it's like mechanically, won't it? Mm. Do you know what though? I'm looking inside the boot. You know, like all the bits in terms of structure. Yeah. It doesn't look too bad, actually. It does not look too bad. I'm excited about this though, Kev. Oh, yeah? Well, just, I just can't believe how long you've had it. Well, well neither can most other people, <laughs> to tell you the truth. They used to ask us, have you still got that car? I says, yeah. Really? Yeah. They've all asked us, have you still got it? No. Yeah. Wow. But I've just kept it. There so must be... Always wanted to get it back on the road. Yeah. Always wanted to get it back on the road. Plus, I'd like to see how it to my parents. Yeah. Because they paid for it that long. <laughs> Just to keep it in here, you know, just so that I can get it back on the road. Yeah, well, let's let's pump these tyres up, pull it outside and have a good look at it, and hopefully the rain will go away. Well, the sun's starting to come out yeah, now. Yeah, it is. With a bit of luck. Gavin here, who's the one that contacted the late brake shop out this car. He's just um, just releasing the the rear the rear calipers because they are discs on the back. Yeah, it's freed that one. And the tires, look, we have pumped the tires up. They've completely held air, and they're not crusty at all. Look at the condition of these. So now we think that it'll roll because the seized handbrake has been unseized. I'm going to roll out the special carpet for the Sapporo's. First trip out into the sunshine, sunshine in many years. So let's get pushing. Let's see if we can get it out. Oh, hello. We do. I can hear a hissing. Yeah, we've got a puncture on this, this tire, but it's okay because it's probably going to go down the back. So. Three really important things I need to tell you. One, like. Two, subscribe. Three, we have a merch shop. You can buy Late Break Show merch. Have a visit. I'll put the link in the description. Now that we've got it out, you can see it in its uh, dusty state. I love the styling of the Sapporo. It kind of looks, we were saying earlier, it kind of looks like a DeLorean at the front. The way this is cut in and sort of like this black mask with the quad headlights, it looks ace. 
and the bumpers are really quite flush to the car. But, um, and there's this ridge you can see on now on the, on the roof that goes all the way down here. It's just a cool bit of design and it's pillarless. We'll get that window down in a minute. But I've got my notebook out. There's not actually that many notes to make about the Sapporo because history on it's really quite patchy. It doesn't have a huge following, not compared to Celicas and Skylines and Datsun Z cars, but I believe the GSR, this is the two litre with a twin carburetor. GSL was a single carburetor car, or maybe a 1.6. You could get a 1.6. This is the two litre, 108 horsepower, I think. Oh, rear wheel drive, as I said, two door coupe. And I think the underpinnings are based upon the Galant. But if you live outside of the UK in America, this is where Mitsubishi partnered with Chrysler. So this car would have been badged either as a Dodge Challenger, not the Challenger that we remember of the muscle car era, or a Plymouth Sapporo. The interior of the Sapporo, man, this is amazing. It really is amazing. It's one of the best, it's one of the best looking interiors of this era that I've ever seen. I mean, the back seats, the condition of the seats are amazing, Kevin. I mean, probably the fact that there's no lights, no windows in there, hasn't seen UV, yet the weird <laughs> way that the steering wheel is disintegrated is quite strange. But ignore that for a second. Let's look at the features of this thing. Pillarless two door. So wind that window down and you can see all the way across, very American inspired. And that's the whole thing. At like this era, Japanese were trying to break the American market using all those influences to try and make their cars look American, but shrunk and actually more advanced technologically. Mm. But when we were pushing it out, I noticed that overhead console and you were like, oh yeah, that's, yeah. it's like an aircraft. Yeah. How, what button? It's got numerous buttons on it, including I think a digital clock. Yeah. Do you remember that then? Yeah, yeah. I remember uh, it all, yeah. That, and the directional, the directional map, sort of map finder, light there. Whatever. And there's a ridge that runs all the way down the headliner. The headliner's mint. The door cards are mint. I mean, look at these. This vinyl and this carpet and the tartan, it's really, really mint. And then you've got five, it's a five-speed gearbox. I couldn't remember. It is five-speed. Yeah. I thought it was. I was reading my notes last night. So these came with five speeds, certainly the two litres. And look at the condition of this sort of faux leather stitched dash. Again, the condition of the dash is really well preserved. It's very, very impressive. Those back seats, well, let's have a look at these. Those back seats look like they haven't been used. You've got these weird grab handles on the seats, but I love the... You know what, when I first put my head in and I saw this, I thought this was the work of mice. Mm -hmm. But I don't think mice have been in here because everywhere I look, I do not see rodent poo. <laughs> and I don't, and the carpets haven't been eaten alive, which, is, which bodes really, really well. So really it comes down to the condition of the body and the repair that you said you had the sills redone. Yeah. And this rear quarter, lower quarter kind of area, mm. which you weren't happy about the, the yeah, quality I, of I the did, workmanship. Well, I didn't like that, the way, the way it came up. The way it came up there. Yeah. But although, it's still although it's scabby around this, again, the Sapporo badge, the look at the font on that. I mean, that's basically Studio 54 or uh, Gavin said when we were pumping the tires up, it looks like something from a 70s chat show. It really does, an incredible font. I don't think this is that, this is that bad. Frilly on the, um, the edges of the, the, both the doors, but you've got to understand that the, the the hunger for, for rust of these cars when they were quite new. I've just noticed. Do you remember if this has an adjustable steering column? I think this has an adjustable steering column, you know. Which for the time, again, another feature that like many, oh, it's probably a bit stiff. I'll see if I can get, get a, a, a pair of grips on it. Is it what's the mileage, Kev? Uh, 76. 76. 76. And look at all of these buried, Gauges, water temp, oil pressure, am ammeter. They're all individually, and, it, and it's sort of concave, isn't it, around yeah. the driver? Yeah. What a thing. We've popped the bonnet and had a look round uh, the Sapporo. It's been a few years since you've seen that. Yeah. <laughs> it is twin carb, as suspected, being the GSR two litre model, single overhead cam. Um, now, it looks all right. We've put it in first gear and rolled it to and fro and the engine's not seized because we saw the crank pulley turn. We found a brand new um, 
distributor cap on the back seat in the box. Although this cap looks good, the leads look pretty good as well. And this is free key. Yeah. Look at look at this, Kev. You you were. Oh, did you manage to get it off? Yeah. yeah have a look. The top, to the top. Right. <laughs> like not not even one drop. <laughs> it's not even rusty. Right? And the the oil is really nice, and uh, and full. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the air cleaner off. We'll probably spray some um, lubricant on the linkages of the carbs. Take off the fuel line because we probably want to bypass the main fuel tank, which apparently has an electromagnetic fuel pump in it. Um, but then we'll first of all we'll turn it over with all the all the plugs out. Mm -hmm. Double check that, fun. and then see if we get a spark. Have a look inside the cap. That's what we're going to do. I want you to tell me about the go faster stripes because we, <laughs> we had a chat off camera. <laughs> Oh yeah, I just put them on because I thought, just make it look a little bit neater. Well, was this in the early 80s? Yeah, yeah, a long, <laughs> long time ago. But I love at the back here, it goes into a couple of other stripes, like stripe, yeah. stripe, 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 stripe. There's just little bits of offcuts of that, which I just put down there to sort of like marry that up. And you did that? Yeah. And they were on there as well. I put them on there where the super old, super old badge was Ah, uh, yeah, you, you still can just got see that the lines. Badge. Yeah, I've still got it. You have still got that Yeah, badge. it's somewhere. Bit of oil, bit of oil down the bores. The access to the engine is phenomenal, isn't it? Yeah, you can get in these cars. You can't get in and you. You can any. see, I can see straight down the spark plug hole. Nothing's fouling it. It's just a wonderful thing. You bought the top of the range though, Kev. You weren't messing around. You went two liter twin carb. Did, can you remember what it felt like to drive? Did it feel quick? Yeah, it was quite quick. Was it? Yeah. Right, with, battery. with uh, yeah, let's let's stick a battery on it. There's two things that could happen. We could get engine turning over and a spark, but also will the digital clock in the overhead console work? Because that's what we all want to know. That's your positive side there, yeah. Yeah, so the make sure it wasn't like on it. Mm -hmm. It's not going to stretch, you need to come back over a little bit if you can. Very old. Milk pasteurised by northern dairies. Mm -hmm. Stick it on the chassis rail down there. Or would. There's, two, there's two frames of thought. You could put two gallons of fuel in the tank, let it purge the initial gunge and then try it. Or you could put an inline filter in it. Or we can run something straight off that which we do, we, we've got an electric fuel pump. Yeah, we could run off a car battery, short piece of pipe, <laughs> done. Then you bypass all of that potential gunge and rust back there. The e exactly. So um, I think we do it that way. Is it worth giving the key a turn to see if it... If Let's, that... yeah, do you want to do the honours, yeah. Kevin? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, that sounds really fine. Sounds healthy. Well, that was that was thrilling. Can we say that? Yeah. When was the last time you turned the bloody car over? I have no idea. <laughs> I can't remember. Just try it one more time. Are all the dash lights coming on? <laughs> Sweet. That's good, isn't it? Yeah. That's really nice. So let's see if there's a um, let's see if there's a spark okay. then. So grab number one plug. Yeah, you grab number one. Is number one that one or is that number yeah, one? Yeah. Now, if you want to turn it over in a second, Kevin. Oh, yep. Try yeah. 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 We've got a spark. We've got a spark. Awesome. So plugs back in, and then we'll we'll rig up a little fuel line. Oh, let me see if I've got some spare fuel line. I tried to I tried to look up history on the Sapporo on online. It's it's so scarce. It's spookily scarce. And according to howmanyleft.co.uk or .com, there's four on the road in Britain, and there's five sawned, of which this could or may or may not be. So we're talking less than I have fingers, mm. Sapporo's in Great Britain. It's almost one of those cars that's like disappeared in the past, isn't it? It is absolutely. So to this point, I must thank Tony BMW again for building me this incredible custom cam, which is for fuel injected cars, but we can use it in this instance. I might just pulse it. It's got a fuel pump built in. Hurrah. We're gonna, we've got fresh fuel in that. Attach it to the twin carbs. Gonna give it a little pulse to prime them. Turn it over, see if we get a bang and go from there, tonybmw.co.uk. What a lovely guy.
So I'm just going to give it a quick pulse just to see if it, we've put some fuel into the bowls. Okay, you hear that? We've got fuel, we've got sparks, we've got water. Um, yeah, let's rock and roll, shall we? Try do you, and want turn to do, it. you want to do the honours, Kevin? Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. Oh my gosh, fuel. within two fuel, seconds. Fuel, came in, the carbs, uh... fuel did come in. Okay, again. Do you want us to keep going? Yeah. yeah. Just keep Okay. I'm not going to give it any more fuel for the time being. I'm just hoping I haven't put too much fuel in from the Tony's can of hope. Ready? Yeah. Yeah. Can we give it a bit of throttle? Do you want me to do the throttle on here? Okay. No? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. That's right, ready? Yeah. Wow. Oh my God. Sweet as wow. Well. Listen to that. Well, that's <laughs> that, Oh my gosh, that's so smooth. Switch it off. My gosh, guys. My gosh. How about that? It's good, isn't it? That's really smooth. Happy me. And that's yeah, yeah. That's that's <laughs> that's stone cold, no air filters, on running on a, a little can of hope. That's not bad. That was effortless as well. That was effortless. Yeah. And did you see how smooth it was already? And that's like, that's on choke. Mm. Yeah, that wow. Japanese <laughs> <laughs> well, we know, I mean, if you want to, we can, we can fire it up again. And uh, we, we know we could run it for a bit longer because we know the cooling's okay. And let it warm through a bit. Yeah, you could see if we can get it to, you know, warm up a little bit. We'll keep, keep an eye on it, but yeah. wow. How cool's that? Are you happy you do that? The last time this started, how old were you, can I ask? How old was that? In 93. Go on, flip the neck. 30 years ago. Is that what it is, 30 years ago? Mm. So I was it's... 31. Right. So you were 31 when you last struck this car up? Yeah, possibly. Wow. And do all the dash lights work? Just check. All, the bulbs are all of them. All of them work. Even the side lights. On the Even the side lights. That's mega. <laughs> we just got the car going. I know, it's amazing, absolutely <laughs> amazing. Something uh, I'd never thought I'd see. I could see your face from when you were behind the wheel. And I, you know, I was just giving it a little bit of throttle from under the bonnet. And you were like, you're a bit like, oh my gosh, it is gonna. I feel like it wants to, to live again. The reason why I say that is, you think of how easily the wheel nuts came off and how the rear brakes unseized. Think about how easy it, easy it was for, to take the plugs out. Mm -hmm. Sometimes stuff, all stuff is seized. And yet on a car which is notorious for rot, it's actually, it's actually pretty good. What's more exciting? Engine running, overhead digital clock working. Engine running. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not not I'm not that bothered about the I'm, I'm so excited clock. about the clock. <laughs> Let's see if we can run it for more than, you know, 20 seconds. There we go, look. You see that? You can hear the pitch changing of the, the fuel pump. Are we? Well, let's just run a milk bottle full. It's actually moving fuel much quicker than I was expecting it to. There we go, thank you. Right, let's hold this up to the light. It looks like Trucker's Tizer, oh, but it's actually, <laughs> that's apple juice, isn't it? That looks more like something else. Yeah. The choice for a new generation. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, yeah, I mean, in, ter in terms of sediment, there's, no bits in it, is there? there's actually no bits in it. So it's clear, but it's it's obviously old. I think we should run it off this for safety. Yeah. And I think I think and I think we'll put another can. We'll put another can to catch that because it doesn't do any harm to to purge 
anyway. Starter. I think you strike it up again and I'll, I'll give it a tickle on the electric fuel pump. Starter? Yeah. Fuel. Gonna give it a quick tickle. Pick it off. Yeah. That's so nice. Another tick. That's all right. Folks, fully in. That's it. That's, that's off choke. Wow. That's pretty good. That's really good, isn't it? How nice is that? Look, no vibration at all. With no fuel filter on it, and air filter it's. Let's have a look in the glove box. I'm amazed by the condition of the dash, this sort of fake leather stitched dash, it's great. Service booklet. This is a 1978 car, the first generation of Sapporo, which this is, was uh, started in production in 78, till 80. So this is an early car. There we go, look, original owner. Cowies of Middlesbrough, is it? And then we've got this, the official Colt Accessories catalog. Oh yeah. Do you want a Colt Sport windbreaker or racing anorak? Yes, I do. But look at this, look. Performance sport kit, two Weber twin choke 40 DCOEs, sports wheel, and it gets even better. Look, Recaro driving seat set. Now that would have been an expensive option, wouldn't it? Or the, uh, what looks like faux sheepskin covers. How could you possibly cover up these seats? They're too good. What is this? This is a decal. I'm gonna hold it up to the light. This is a John Player special. Team Lotus decal. Can you see that? Unused. This has got to go on there, hasn't it, surely? What were you playing on that? Probably soul music. Was it? Yeah. We can't play, or oh, maybe we can play it. You can try it. That way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It works. <laughs> Bit dodgy, but it still works. <laughs> That's so dodgy. Nice. It still plays. <laughs> Because we've got it going, and because I feel sorry for it, and Kevin's, I can see Kevin's smile on his face, we're gonna give it just a little bit of a wash down, um, get those years of grime off it. This is not a detailing video, don't judge me. This car is clearly gonna need some paint repair anyway, all right? Right. This is also not weed killer. This is wash wax. Hasn't that been exciting? Awesome. I love it when we can get one fired up. Brought out for the first time in 30 years, struck up, mechanically sounds glorious. Here is a 70s Japanese coupe that is very, very lesser seen and less celebrated than the other cars of its era. Maybe you know of a car that you think I should go and investigate, either in a garage, in a barn, on a driveway, in a hedge. Let me know. Have a look at the description uh, below. 
and uh, there's an email address you can contact us on there. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. Maybe leave me a comment and maybe you want to support this channel via Patreon. You can do. There's a link in the description so you can get access to videos like this typically earlier. Oh, and if you want a bit of beef jerky, I'll save this last bit till last. You just simply take it off the steering wheel and just just pop it in your mouth. It's it's just dead easy. Thank <laughs> you.